My name is Mike Smith, and I'm a PhD candidate at the New Jersey Institute of Technology in the United States. Our research team studied the transparency and consent framework, which was designed to support GDPR in, two, in 2018 when the GDPR law went into effect. This law was to protect Europeans uh, with regard to data collection, having uh, given the right to European citizens to uh, have control over their data and uh, being given the opportunity to uh, grant or deny permission for their data to be collected by companies. Digital advertising companies created the transparency and consent framework to adhere to GDPR. Now, when, when uh, a consumer, when a person goes to a web page on their browser, likely unbeknownst to that consumer, dozens, if not hundreds of companies are enabled to track that user's data, to track the clicks, and to uh, collect data over time, uh, in large part to serve personalized advertising. The TCF, the Transparency and Consent Framework, was designed to empower that community of uh, ad tech companies working with publishers to share the European user's consent election, to either allow one's data to be collected and processed, or, or a decline of consent, and to have that decision circulated amongst those actors so that that user would be uh, protected if they chose to decline consent. Our team evaluated the TCF version 2.1. In a prior work, the TCF version 1.1 uh, had been evaluated, so we built on on that study. And while we were analyzing 2.1, version 2.2 came out, which I'll, I'll share the significance of that in a moment. Our hope is that our findings inform privacy regulators, ind industry uh, practitioners, and the IAB uh, in Europe as well, who, who are the administrative overseers of this framework. So this is the outline of the talk, and I'll discuss our system design, and after that our findings, and our conclusions, and future work planned. So how does TCF work exactly? Well, the user is going to visit a website, and that user is uh, presented with what, what we know as a cookie banner that um, invites the user to agree or, or decline, or partially agree or partially decline, the user's consent to being tracked. And uh, typically, consent is either fully granted or fully declined, but there are uh, gradients in the middle where uh, certain purposes are allowed and others are not, or certain uh, vendors, ad tech companies, are allowed for tracking purposes while others are not. So the consent election is made. In, in this case, we show a, either a full accept or a full decline. And the TC string is created in this compressed value. And, and you'll see how our string handler uh, decodes it. Within that string, there's a lot of different types of information. One important aspect of the string is the uh, permissioning of the 10 uh, data collection data processing purposes, which ones were allowed, which ones were declined. Another important part of the string is a listing of which 
advertising technology companies were uh, permissioned or declined. So our system, generally speaking, came in three parts. We built a crawler, of course, to visit thousands of websites, to identify which of those sites employed the TCF behind their cookie banner for recording TC strings. We also uh, built the TC string handler, which I, I mentioned a moment ago, and, and an analyzer as well. So our crawler crawled approximately uh, 2,000 websites with that supported TCF. Our string handler uh, de decoded uh, the automated decline of consent. We built the system to always decline consent. So in that scenario, no data should be uh, collected. We simulated users who were saying no to any data collection whatsoever. And then our analyzer determined which publishers and which consent management platforms working on behalf of the publishers recorded that consent in a compliant manner. The handler searches through and decodes strings, and it compares the decoded strings with the user's uh, consent decline to check for compliance. Our handler uses the IAB's uh, decoder. The analyzer aggregates decoded uh, TC strings from the string handler, and it ensures the string includes elections for one or more of the 10 standard purposes for data collection. As an example, purpose one is the purpose that allows the storing and accessing of data on a user's device. Uh, a cookie, uh, writing a cookie to a device would be a, a, an illustration of that. Now there's an important legal concept. It's not a technical concept, but it's a legal concept. In GDPR, Consent, user consent, is required to collect and process data unless a business claims that they have legitimate interest. Unless the business claims that there is a reason why we, the business, have a right to override the user's consent election, including a decline. And, and so a claim of legitimate interest is uh, something that we were keen to observe in our study. So here are our observations and findings. The rows represent the uh, various uh, consent management platforms that the cr 2,000 crawled websites uh, were using. They, they each choose one. And the columns indicate the count of the uh, crawls and the, and the domains that were crawled with valid TC strings, empty TC strings, legitimate interest claims, consent accepted claims, and, and claims of legitimate um, interest for purpose one, which is not allowed. We found as, as regards to the recording of the uh, user consent election, which again was always a decline of consent, we, we found that almost 98% of the time that that recording was accurate in the TC framework. Uh, when we declined, it was correctly recorded. So that's good. But what's uh, so significantly less good is that um, legitimate interest was claimed 72% of the time. And so that, that is a major override of, uh, of, of user consent choice. So we plotted in this table the um, percentages of uh, claims, the use of legitimate interest, and, and you can see uh, with the exception of purpose one, where it's explicitly uh, not allowed in the rules, that that uh, legitimate interest is, is uh, one might say, m very misused. We also counted the number of uh, cookies uh, that were deployed um, as I said earlier, uh, the, the um, 
un unless you acquire consent, you shouldn't deploy cookies. So in, in these cases, when there was an empty TC string, there were less cookies. Um, when there were violations, there were very high rates. And I'll mention one thing about empty TC strings. A decline of consent has a very specific non-empty TC string format. However, we did find, uh, after consulting with the administrators of the system, that an empty TC string is also considered to be a um, decline of consent recording. So we, we feel the, 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 um, the framework would benefit from disallowing that to remove ambiguity. We also look to see if uh, more frequently visited sites, the higher traffic sites, were more or less compliant. 10% of the uh, most highly traffic sites that we studied uh, were uh, one way or another non-compliant. And so in closing, I'll mention uh, a couple of things. One, there's a uh, landmark ruling known as Schrems II, which required um, clear or clearer uh, user interface options so that the user uh, could know that they have the option uh, to decline consent and still use the website. Uh, very substantially, um, in, the, um, in, in, in 2022, uh, the Belgian uh, DPA uh, went after TCF and, and uh, ruled that it was uh, fundamentally a violation of GDPR. And, and recently in 2024, the um, Court of Justice of the European Union upheld that decision. And so the, the TCF itself has, has an uncertain fate. Uh, the new version 2.2 uh, disallows the frequent use of legitimate interests that we observed. So our intention in a follow-up study is to analyze version 2.2 to see if the um, adoption, the, the use of or the misuse of legitimate interest is, is substantially reduced or zeroed out. And um, we've made all of our data and our tools available open source. So thank you for listening.